All right, welcome to another edition of the Hixie Nana Podcast. This is Corona Chronicles episode 5. I believe this will be number 33, Dave? No, 34. 34, yeah. 34. A Hixie Nana Podcast, 34. Um, once again, we are welcome. Uh, we're, excuse me, not welcome. We're joined by Joe Kometz. Dave, of course, Hello. here as well. Yep. Um, and... Basically, we're going to start today's show like we do every other show. Um, Joe, what is the update from uh, the Comets household as far as the corona virus? It, it's getting better. That's oh. kind of what's the big... All right. That, um, yesterday into today, and like two days ago into yesterday, have been the first two days where like you sort of see the number of hospitalized people went up less than it did the day before. So it's very slowly, but we're we're starting to kind of hit the hit sure. the top of the hill, hit the top of the peak. Yeah, they were that. saying the peak would be sometime early next week, probably Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, and you're starting to see that we're starting to get to that spot. So I mean that's definitely a good thing, and um, if people just keep taking social distancing, you know, seriously. Some people obviously still don't, but, you know, keep taking it seriously. Things should get better. New Zealand killed it. They have their, there's no more coronavirus in New Zealand. They all listened to their prime minister. She put social distancing and everyone actually did it. Everyone stayed inside. Everyone stayed six feet apart. They were only allowing one person at a time to the grocery store to get what they needed. They had the military get involved. In two weeks, no more coronavirus. Only one death. From coronavirus. Wow. Only one death in New Zealand, and now they have no more coronavirus. They're closing their borders for six months, meaning, you know, you can't go out of the country, but that's fine because, like, you know, if they do that with America. I know people like to go international, but for the most part, like, for us going on vacation and stuff, we go to, like, the beaches along the Atlantic coast. We don't really go, you know, to Europe and stuff, so. Wow. We we should be more like that. It also helps that they have a small country too. That's that that also helps a lot too, for for sure. Because like again, it's kind of hard to do that because we have a very big country. But yeah, no, we should definitely it's not definitely... just that though. There's a lot of well, stuff. Well, there. I, I know. I'm just saying it, it helps because it's you know. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. No. I, you're right though. We should honestly start implementing that because um. If not, this thing will be going on for a very long time. And I'm I'm not be you boys, but I'm getting tired of sitting home all day just you know feeling like Groundhog Day, dude. Every day just seems to go by the same. Everything feels the same. And just get, I'm getting exactly. tired of it. Exactly. Honestly, I kind of wish I could stay home because at this point, um, the supermarket, I, if you guys, if, if you didn't know, I work at a supermarket. And it, it is, it's just, it's just absolute pandemonium right now. We've gotten to the point where um, we started taking in quantities, like you can only go 25 in the store at a time. I believe that was last Sunday. Wow. Um, so we started taking quantities then. We've gotten to the point now where we are, we have a thermometer, like, a, <laughs> like which is almost kind of like a, it looks like a little ray gun. And you point it at their head and you have to take their temperature to make sure that. Um, no way. That they're healthy. Yesterday we had to turn a guy down because he had a he had a fever. Like you can't. Guy was pissed. Yeah, but. Damn. That dude. Well, yeah, that dude's an idiot. If you got a fever, man, listen. Don't listen to the thing like people are talking about. Don't leave the house. If you need food, have a family member get it to you. And I don't get me wrong. If this guy was in a situation where he's the only guy who's gonna get him stuff, then that's different. But you can have you can ask a neighbor. You know, like, I feel like even in times like this, you know, as crappy sometimes I feel like the human race has gotten, I still have faith in the human race. Might be blind faith, but, like, faith that we'll still step up when we need to step up. And, you know, I hope that in a situation like that, someone can just be like to their neighbor, hey, man, I kind of got a fever. Would you mind picking something up at the grocery store for me? You can drop it off my front door. I'll pay you the money. Like, yeah, well, that's yeah. stuff like that. Well, I mean, you, we kind of have no choice to, but to be nice, or else, like, we're not going to stop this. So I feel like, yeah, no, Joe, you're all right, though. I feel like humanity, I feel like, for the most part, what I've been hearing, like, people have been stepping up, helping, you know, whoever out, neighbors have been helping each other out. So, I mean, you know, that's, 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 what, you get, that's what we have to keep doing to uh, to get this thing going. 
And the problem the, the problem is is that some people still aren't taking this as serious as they should. It's gotten to the point now where it's almost the norm that people are showing up to the store in latex gloves and a mask. But there's we had a couple people today showing up with with nothing and we're taking their we're taking their temperature and like what the heck are you taking my temperature for like get the thing away from my face like what the hell and I'm like bro like it's it's for your safety it's for your safety and it's for the safety of everyone else because um, as 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 it's well documented now I mean this is a very serious situation yeah. and um, it's uh it's just unfortunate that some people are just so stubborn to the point that they just yeah, they just don't take it serious serious enough. It doesn't matter how severe it is. You're gonna st- again. You're gonna still have some people who are like, like you said, they don't really care. It's like it's not gonna affect me. But like, I was actually watching a video the other day of some guy. He he's one of the he look he he worked out a lot. He um he's a nurse for something at R N or C N A whatever. Um and he was like as fit as a fiddle, fit as a fiddle, and he got the disease and he was in a hospital for a very long time because again this thing is dangerous. So like. You know, I was again in the beginning. I, I have to admit, I was kind of like, "Oh, it's not gonna bother me," all that stuff. But now, like seeing these, seeing a guy, and I'm like, "Hmm, gonna gonna need to uh, take the, you know, I'm, I'm obviously I was taking the precautions before, but I'm gonna try to make an extra effort to like try to up it up a little bit, you know, because that's that's some scary stuff right there. I don't want to be in a hospital for like how many days, you know? Can't do that. So. Yeah, for sure, especially with the amount of hospitalizations. As even if Joe said, like, it's still going up, it's just not going up as much. But um yeah. trying to get just trying to get everyone safe and just I mean I saw on the news the other day, it seems as if the estimations are going um from I think four million down to maybe five hundred thousand or something like that. I don't know if I don't know how true that is. My parents watch Fox News, so it really well, they all well they always estimate worst case like when they put the estimates out there, like at first they were trying to, you know, not have the American people panic. But now that everyone knows what's going on, they're you know, they whenever they estimate, they always estimate worst case scenario. Yeah, if there wasn't social distancing, if they didn't shut yeah. down the schools, like God for, like imagine if the schools were still open right now. Oh yeah, no. Especially exactly. universities where you're living in very tight quarters with other people and you guys are using the same showers and the same bathrooms. I mean that's just Honestly though with universities, I know like this sounds dumb. I feel like if we were there right now, and just hear me out, like I'll explain what I'm trying to say. For those that live on campus in dorms, none of us had it. We're staying on campus. If they didn't allow us to leave campus, or if we did, we had to check in, check our temperature, make sure we didn't have it. But for the most part, we weren't leaving campus. So we were all, in a way, especially like, so see, this is my school. We're kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Like, we, I feel like, you know, we would have been just as safe if we stayed on campus. Obviously, we didn't. It's fine. It's a deal. But I'm saying, you know, for in some cases where you have campuses like in urban areas, like, yeah, know, like you New have, Haven. Uh, yeah, UNH, you have, you know, like just big schools, you know, like UCLA, USC. Yep. Obviously, they needed to close. But, like, I don't know. I feel like, at least in the case of my campus, I feel like we would have still been just as safe. If yeah, we but stayed what if, there. but you could also have a situation where you, it's like central where one guy gets it and then all of a sudden everyone has to evacuate. Oh, yeah. 100%. And so, I mean, I think they're, they were trying to avoid that. Um, and then, I mean, I, I don't really know. Dave, got anything? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, Joe is right. I mean, his school is very um, – very secluded but again it's like a domino effect once one person gets it because mm-hmm. you don't know what they're doing you know someone could be going out to do get something they interact with someone who already has it they bring it back to school it's game over it's just you know so honestly they made the right call and uh you know we're all home and safe for now and uh yeah just yeah. but hopefully wait out just a little bit longer hopefully this is uh the beginning of the end yeah. Of, of coronavirus. <laughs> it better Keeping be. Fingers crossed. Keeping our I'm fingers starting crossed. to lose my mind, man. I am starting yeah, to Last lose thing my I'll touch on. Even my dad was saying, my dad at first, when this was getting bad, he was saying that worst case would be June 21st, June 14th. So that was exactly three months after we started any type of social distancing stuff. Now he's saying probably by Memorial Day, things will be back to normal. But he said we'll probably be able to start hanging out with people again sooner rather than later. 
That is what I like to hear. So, the boys knock, on, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Obviously, I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah, as of right now, it's still, and it's like... As of right now, Salford Business Day is still a thing till April 30th. So, until then... Hopefully, that really sounds... Good. That is, like... That date is getting closer. It's, what, yeah. uh, 22 days from now? I mean, that... Yeah. I mean, it sucks. It's still, what, three weeks, right? Yeah, about three weeks in a day. Yeah. Um, but that, that it I can seemed a, a lot farther away the last time we yeah. talked. Yeah. So, yeah. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, um, we're saying it, it's like third. It's like, you know, when you're playing football, it's like it's third down and manageable. This isn't like, you know, we're sitting at some Hail Mary type play right now. Yeah. It's we're, getting, like, we're getting it. <laughs> I like that analogy. Yeah, I like that as well. All right, so enough with Corona talk. Let's move on. And we finally, like we said, we have hope of getting the boys back together. We have hope of um, eventually normalizing, just getting everything back to normal by Memorial Day. Uh, other good news, we have hope for sports. Um, yes. Dana White, we'll start with him. An absolute crazy move on his part. He purchased an island, and he plans on fighting um, – I believe he said all international fights at this island until this coronavirus thing clears up. Guys, what do we think about potentially seeing these UFC fights in some tropical island? <laughs> I will start by saying Mortal Kombat. This yeah. is the plot yeah. to Mortal Kombat. I, and I, I love it. I think, in all honesty, this should have been a thing years ago for all sports, where you have a secret island. This is like, you know, I was listening to this on Pardon My Take. They were talking about it, but it's like, true. Get like the richest people in the world. Get like Bill Gates, people, you know, all these people that invest in it. Get a large, get a, you get a private island. Because there's a ton of them. I'm just using this down in the Bahamas. Like, you know, when I went on um, my cruise back a while ago, Carnival Cruise Lines has their own private island. But you can get these private islands, put a football field, put, you know, a baseball field, basketball court, a hockey rink and you use this island for if a crisis happens to where you can't play the games in america obviously you know this time it's like a global pandemic but there could be a time let's say there's natural disasters happening all up the like in the southeast it's like, like, like a katrina sort, sort of situation yes. with the saints yeah you can have something like that for you and you have a bat like a backup place where you can play all of these sports and I think it's great. I think, honestly, the MLB, which you know, you'll know, you touch on them playing in a bit, but NBA, NHL, NBA, <coughs> NFL, should look into what Dan White's doing because it's, it's genius. Now he can hold these fights here because let's say, you know, UFC-wise, they don't like, you know, like sports don't come back for a fight. I'm sorry, for fighting for a while. Now Dana White could be like, all right, the U.S. won't let me fight. I'm going to do it on my own private island. I mean, I think there's obviously a risk at this because if, mm. you know, God forbid a fighter comes over, he has the virus, he transfers it over, and now everyone on his island is well, infected. He's probably going to take measures to get everyone. Yeah, that's like, the thing. Yeah, he's he not would... going to just like, hey, just come in here and just not get tested. He's probably going to have like a testing station, get everyone tested before you like get on the island or whatever, or before you, you know, participate in any sport. And then, um, you know, kind of kind of get that going. Because I don't think he's going to be like, hey, just come in here and just bull. Because then that's exactly, that's how you could spread the whole thing at that island. So eradicating the whole process there. So, All right, so yeah, that was going to make sense. And I'm just excited just in general because it's been so long without sports. I think it's been, what, three weeks now, no sports, something like that. I didn't get the exact amount. But, uh, I mean, watching the U.S. Yeah, too long. I mean, it's been way too long. Um, and to see potentially, you know, some fights, you know. I'm not the biggest UFC fan in the world, but, you know, I'll take what I can get at this point. A sport. Yeah. Like, this will be a good segue into the next topic. Like, even baseball. Like, my dad was, like, joking around uh, this morning. He was like, who the hell is going to care about baseball? I go, me? If it's the only sport on, you'll see me watching a full nine-inning baseball game. I'll watch the Mets get killed against whoever they're playing. But and that's what my like, you know, that's what my dad was even saying. Because let's just say baseball comes back in May, they're gonna have the highest viewership that baseball's oh, ever had. Oh, of course. No it'll, it'll be one of the most watched things ever. 
sports in general, like all the sports are just gonna have all these viewerships are gonna skyrocket. It's gonna be overwhelming for probably everything. It's gonna be it's gonna be ridiculous. Attendance is gonna be ridiculous. Everything. So, you know, they're gonna make some. They're, they're gonna be definitely making back the money they've lost during well, these during this time here or whatever. No, you you mentioned the attendance. I don't I don't really know how many people are gonna be watching a lot of these baseball games because it seems as if they're doing a very similar thing as what Dana White is doing in that they're going to be holding these pitchers and catchers May 1st, fingers crossed. And that, and that's kind of like if you don't watch baseball. It's basically their training camp. They go on and they just practice um, until the season would be safe, ready to go. Uh, they could easily start the season probably have, with empty stadiums um, and just having the players play. But you know what? Like I said, at this point, I mean, you can see – like. Like, I just go outside, it's spring, it's like 60 degrees, I'm like, man, this is like perfect baseball, we should be playing baseball today, and unfortunately, because of this crisis, you know, it, it isn't happening, but, um, I mean, I'm excited, I mean, it, it's also, like I said, Joe, you, we were just mentioning it earlier, um, about that April 30th, it's not that far away, like, May 1st, you know, that's, I can deal with that, at least a day now, because before that, it was like, you know, um, everything was you know, indefinite. Like base, right. Yeah. Everything was very indefinite. And uh, we were we were even questioning whether or not we're going to have football or not, which, I mean, I mean, if this thing keeps we're going the way it's going. We're not over the woods going, yet with that, knock on wood. I mean, right. I know it's looking a lot better, but I'm not putting anything to a jinx right now, so I'm not going to No, gonna yeah, let's not do that. And the last thing we want is to have this, because it could, it could also just, it could go away in the summer and then come back fall time. Which yeah, be, even worse than, yeah, exactly. Um, I was gonna say though, you were talking about like how the weather is warm and all that. It felt, it feels like this year, for, for some odd reason, the weather has been exceptionally nice for the most part. Like we have, obviously, we're gonna have our raining days here and there, but for the most part, the weather has been very, very like clear. Like compared to, guys, I remember this was like what, um, a couple of years ago, maybe my sophomore year, junior year. Literally around this time, it was still snowing. I was like, there's no way. So like, I've, we've been really been really uh, lucky with the weather so far. But, again, we can't really do much because we're trapped inside. So that's another reason why I'm kind of getting upset, too. I feel like the weather hasn't been as nice as it seems. I feel like it's just been the same weather, but it's the fact that on the days where it is kind of nice, we can't enjoy them. That's all I think I, it is. I think that's it. I, I don't I know. Think I think so, it because to be... this winter, we did, it didn't snow a lot, but it was a wet winter. It rained a lot. It was still really, you know, like in the 30s, 40s. Like up at school for me, it was like we would go like two, three weeks without seeing the sun. Like it's not like an exaggeration. I'm not talking it was like pitch black every day, but it was like we had like a stretch where it was cloudy and rainy for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about I don't know if it, how drastically different it was here. You know, we're only a couple hours away, but, you know, I think it's just Dave. It's more so. The fact that when it's nice out, we can't really enjoy it. Like we can't go down to the rec and play basketball. So you're basically you know saying I mean? it's like a mental thing for me. It's just I'm just I kind think of it is. At it. All right. Well, Side note, by the because... way, the pool. I am opening up my pool on Friday. So. Oh. I mean, so, yeah, like it. All big. right. That's big. <laughs> I had to have. Um, yeah, can't that's, wait, man. That's pretty early. Most people wait till Memorial Day. This is. Well, this is normally we open it like early to mid May. But because of all this, we're like, why not open it up now, clean out the pool. Let's say we have a warm, like, an, I'm talking like a warm day. It has to be like in the 70s, you know, because you, know, you get one of those every once in a while in April, maybe even like touches like 80 or something. The pool won't be warm, but still, just, and even like my dad was saying, just to go sit outside and like look at like, a, even just like a clean pool. It's like something about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it gets your memory. It gets the mind, you know, going, I guess, because. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it gets annoying it's staring at your phone and your computer. That's literally what I've been doing phone, computer, just back and forth, and it's just my. I think my eyesight, my eyesight are probably getting worse from that. But um, yeah, I'm getting tired of it, man. I really am. So yeah, no, I can't wait. Right, so moving on from there, um, the NFL. We'll talk about that. Two teams with two new jerseys, and um, we're gonna have Dave try to break them down. So Dave. Start us off with these Buccaneers jerseys. Um, Dave, obviously you aren't the biggest football fan, but this essentially was the uniforms the Buccaneers wore mm. prior to their uh, 
their latest jerseys. So these jerseys, Dave, try to kind of try to break them down to me just for a little right. bit. So there's three. Again, I'm not. I don't really know. The, I'm, I'm not a football term, terminology guy. So if whatever, don't 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 judge me. Whatever. Yeah, just, but I'm just seeing, give me the just give me the colors. Me no, the I'm colors. seeing I'm seeing three colors right now. I'm seeing three colors. Right. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> guess one is an away one, one is a home one, and one is a whatever one. So the white one. There's, there's a white one right here. Um, you know, it seems uh it's very very sleek, very um. Very very bright, very radiant. Um, you know the colors, the, the red colors are. Uh, there's a cu- couple of reds here and there, um, but um, I like that one a lot. I, I think it looks very very nice. Um, the red one looks very intimidating. It's uh, there's a uh, it's just a red jersey and the pants are obviously like that like blackish color. I think that's black. I, I, it's like a copperish brown. Yeah yeah yeah. It's not well yeah. It looked it looked black from here, but it's yeah. It let me pull, let me pull up these jerseys really quick. Yeah. They're again. I they look very people. phenomenal. Uh, and um, and then there's another one that's just that copper, that copper color, that copper brown, whatever color. But like the whole, that's the whole, that's the whole outfit there. So the, the jersey and the pants, and everything else. Um, yeah, dude, it's just you know, it's uh, very unique. I like it for sure. I mean, it it kind of it looks like this the old one a little bit, but like just updated. So um, yeah, no, it looks uh, looks good. Better than uh, better than a couple of. Better than some better better than th- their old ones. They gotta least, bring yeah. back the creamsicle jerseys, no. man. Those things were sweet. No. That that looks disgusting. No, that looks. Dude, that looks these ugly. things were sweet. That looks ugly, Joe. I'm sorry. That if they not make it there, now, is, there is a little there is a little piece of the creamsicle. You can see it kind of um on the edgings of the white and the red jerseys on the numbers. Look at that, a little man. You're telling me that you wouldn't like Brady in that jersey? Uh, you can see. No. Right, you're telling that. me you wouldn't right. like that right there? <laughs> yeah. Make him even look more of a dork than he already does in a different <laughs> team's jersey. Uh, with that being said, um, this is obviously I think the Buccaneers they went they went with the smart path. They were like we had something good in the past for whatever reason we got rid of it. Let's just bring it back. I think a pretty solid jersey overall. Great color um, schemes too. I like the white, white, red, and copper. Again, I like I like those colors. The only thing I would complain about, obviously, there's no originality at all because this is, you know, copy and paste of what they what they wore beforehand. And then they kept, for whatever reason, they kept the huge logo on the helmet. Yeah. You it, know what? It's uh, too big, man. Yeah, I was going to say something about that. I was going to say it's a, little, it's a little distracting. They should either shrink it down or something else with it because, yeah, it's a little, a little distracting. Everything else looks very cool but like just that just that is not it's a little bit odd there so you know what they should do with that logo hold on i want to try to pull up an example here that i can show you guys all right so see how boise state here kind of has their logo like chromed into Mm -hmm. the helmet yeah that would have been cool if they did something like this it with and they still have the big buccaneer flag but they had it on the side kind of like chromed in to the helmet but it's kind of just it literally looks like you know someone just you know went Slap, oh, yeah, slap, though, yeah. <laughs> and it was, like, it's way always, too big, and they were just like, ah, oh, screw it, we're not going to fix it. It's a little too big, but other than that, I like the kind of reflective feel of the helmet. Um, it has that brown, brownish tint to it, but yet it is, um, it's still kind of chrome, so it's nice and shiny. Yeah, what so is overall, that official color? I, I, it's, it's really, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's a very unique color. I've never seen it before. As, they probably trademarked it, dude. It's probably, like, Buccaneer copper or something it looks it looks cool treasure brown or something like stupid they probably like trademarked it joe what's your any any final analysis on on these buccaneer jerseys before we move on to the next one i mean i don't i don't know i mean personally i think teams change their jerseys way too much i think this is definitely better than the you know the last jerseys they had where they just kind of got instead of putting real numbers they just got a bunch of reflective like you'd see on like a vest like the reflective stripes on a vest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like they just cut up a ton of that and use that for the numbers on the last jerseys. Yeah, those those were absolutely. These ones look. Yeah. yeah those look those were. Yeah, go, go ahead, Joe. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying these these look good. That was my last piece piece right. of uh, analysis. I mean, yeah, the last ones were absolutely hideous. So moving on to the next team's jersey, uh, we got the Atlanta Falcons. They ha- they revealed. Four jerseys, one or three new, three completely new jerseys, and then one is just the throwback that they've been using for years. So, Dave, 
break down what we have going on here with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, again, it's kind of basically almost like the same color scheme as the uh, Buccaneers. Uh, there's a white one. There's a all oh, white one. There's a red and black one. But again, it's not that copper color. It's red and black. There's a all black one, and then there's a uh, black black jersey and white pants one, right? Okay, so that's um, a throwback. You're, you're yeah. looking at the one all the way at the end there. Yeah. So okay, you so, say so. You said there are three regulars and then the one throwback, or well, yeah. three new ones. Okay. Um, again, they also, that looks sharp. Um, I like the um, I like oh, I actually like the, how the they have the black. Uh, for the white one, I like how they have the black. What you call it for the numbers? It's all black. I like that. I think that's pretty sick. Um, yeah, again, it's kind of, it's basically kind of like the the uh, Buccaneers one, but just not the cover brown. But again, it's a very cool one. Nothing really, nothing unique stands out. Just you know. It, I, well, I think there is a couple things that stand out with these jerseys. Yeah. Number one, the the, me, well. the the big ATL in the middle of their jersey right there, instead of it being. Yeah. Falcons or Atlanta, it's just ATL. That's uh, I think it has something to do with either the airport, like that. that that's the airport. Um, yeah. It kind of just looks like that, which I think is kind of ridiculous. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like how now it's like you know, kind of cool. It's cool if you say like the area code of where you live, like you know, we're from the two hundred three. It's kind of like that, like oh, we're from ATL. Like no, you're from you're from Atlanta. You're not. Like this is like I feel like I feel like it's almost like they took like the Atlanta Hawks the NBA team tried to step in and design the uniform because that looks and like then, something that would go on an NBA uniform. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah. And then Dave, did you see the did you see the red jersey here? We have like a red. It's red on top and then it fades to black at the bottom. Oh, I didn't see the fade. Oh well, yeah, it does. The, the, yeah, it does that. And I think it has the. The, the red the red steam or whatever on the side it's kind of connected to the, the jersey too I think you know what I'm talking about yeah the little yeah. red thing on the pants it looks like it's connected to the jersey okay yeah. I missed that yeah, certainly cool. one of the most unique jerseys it's kind of like what the uh, Jaguars used to have with their helmets uh, where it was uh, a fading color now the Falcons did that with a jersey uh, I mean overall. Like you said, there there are some similarities as far as like there's a red jersey. Yeah. Like, there's that red what red and white combination there, except for having the copper color. Atlanta always says the black. They have that shimmery. I really like what they did with their helmets. They kind of added a little chromish shimmer to it, which I like. They kept the same logo on the side, but I think the helmet itself is just a little bit different. Um, but yeah, man, as as good as I thought the Bucks jerseys were. Atlanta definitely was more original, but uh, kind of fell flat as far as um, memorable. Like these jer- these these aren't going to be jerseys that are going to last through the test of time. Yeah. I feel yeah, like exactly, these- yeah. yeah. They're not going to be memorable. They're not, they're not going to stick in your mind for you know for a long time. It's just going to be like, oh, okay, that's what their jerseys are. All right, moving on. Kind of feel like they're they'll be sort of a phase, and then you'll see them starting to phase maybe back to yeah. like what they had before uh, before these. What would you guys rate both uh, both of their uh, both uh, Buccaneers and um, the Falcons jerseys out of ten? Joe, you go first. I don't know. A box five out of ten. Atlanta three out of ten. But Atlanta should just wear their throwback jerseys for every game, like they've been doing almost all of last season too. Their throwback jerseys are sick. They were they're the best jerseys they had. I don't understand why they changed them in the first place. Yeah, Joe, you're a pretty tough grader. I wasn't gonna go that low. For yeah, you. Jesus, man, come on. Uh, I'm I not give... a big Jersey guy, though. Like New Jerseys, they don't really impress me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I like. I still like the Bucks jerseys. Uh, the addition of the third kind of brown jersey was enough for me to kind of be like, all right, well, this is at least somewhat original. So I give them a seven, seven and a half out of ten. I still like those jerseys. Atlanta, I don't like them at all. I think. Uh, yeah, maybe it's just because they're brand new and I'm just looking at them for the first time. Uh, but yeah, I'll I'll go pretty low. I'll go four. I'll go like a four two, four three for uh for their jerseys. Um yeah, again Matt, again the only reason why I'd give uh, um uh the Buccaneers that uh, seven or six is because of that that color, that copper color, because I've never seen that before and I think that looks cool. So I'd give them, I'd give them that like a seven or six, and then the Falcons one is just again, it's a generic, kind of bland, you know. 
but I'll, I'll give him yeah I'll give him like around a three too I guess I guess I'll yeah I'll give him a three a three oh, yeah geez. it's not it's again it's not memorable I'm not gonna be like oh wow that's just cool it's just like oh you got some black stuff slapped on some black stuff all right cool let's moving on so unless they start winning in them then they're gonna be around for a while yeah that's true all right, Dave. You got a topic for us? We yeah, that's what's up next. Dave's random topic. You got anything off the top of your head? Uh, uh, not a random topic, but this is an observation I made the other night. Right? Again, guys, okay. it's gonna be some wild stuff here. But all right. So the other day, like, cause for some odd reason, we uh we keep we keep uh when we have um let's say we have like a chicken or whatever, or any meal we finish up and the remains of it. We typically like to leave it outside for some odd reason, even though we don't have the trash right there. We could just put it in. We like to leave the like like for example like um like a chicken bone or uh, whatever. We just, li- just throw it outside for the animals to have it, right? And so the other day I saw a bunch of raccoons there, right? I saw a bunch of raccoons. <laughs> so, and this one was very. It was okay. So I was saying it was a very fat raccoon. A very very very. very I don't understand why you guys should just. No no no. Trust me, guys. It's it's a good story. I I was. It made me think too. I was like, dude, we're. Um, I feel like. I can, just, distracting Dave, I can just pick I can just picture your neighbors being like, what the heck's going on with this raccoon problem? We got raccoons all over our bed. Oh, it's not just raccoons. I, I am them. his neighbor. No, trust me. That's <laughs> why there's so many wild animals and stuff and skunks and it's raccoons not my fault. and it's not deer my fault. and foxes. It's not my fault. It's because I should have known. Guys, it's not my fault. I tell me, because my stepdad's fault. I'm like, hey, put it in the trash or whatever. He's like, oh, let it, oh let it go outside and just whatever. I'm like, dude. There's gonna be animals all over the place. So yeah, I guess I guess it is my fault. I'm sorry, guys. I'll try to try to handle the situation better. But uh, I don't know. It's you know. Right, so what were we saying? There's a fat well, raccoon. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was a. It was a very very obese raccoon, like walking around. And I was thinking, like, dude, I feel like we're like slowly like destroying like. I feel like these animals are becoming more more self reliant on human beings. Like actually, like it's not even that, Dave. They're becoming self reliant on you. They know <laughs> every night no, no, I'm not at just whatever saying... time. Re- not... Reggie the raccoon. That the the fat raccoon is Reggie. Reggie the Reggie raccoon. The raccoon comes comes and just the alpha. Reggie. All your scraps. All right. Well, again, it's not my fault. Trust me, Joe. I I would like to put in the trash like every other person does. But for some odd reason, he's adamant about that. So I'm just, I'm just gonna stick with what he says. But I was saying, like, a lot of these animals are gonna like be relying on, on humans for, for food. For example, I was actually, I was looking at an article and they were saying how <laughs> seagulls have actually lost their ability to like hu- actually hunt, like in the at the beach. Because again, we always, there's always food and stuff and the trash all over the place. So instead of going to the sea and actually hunting fish, because that's what they used to do, they'd come to the, uh, the shore and just scavenge for food. And get that. So I was saying, like, it's gonna, like, I was thinking about, I don't like, know how run. accurate that report is, Dave, because I still see seagulls getting fish all the time when I when I'm really? going to, like, you I know, have... the ocean. Yeah, Dave, see, 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 seagulls see... are in the ocean all the time. Really, I see them all the time because I see them just by the, uh, uh, by the beach area, just about it. I don't see them in the ocean really. Just oh, obviously when you're flying around, then yeah. But I usually see them on the on the shore, just uh, going through trash and eating people's stuff so i don't know i'm just saying how it's gonna it's affect the easy them way out though too like, i mean think about it if you were hunting people like let's just you use it like this you're hunting deer and instead of going to hunt for the deer you know that the deer will just walk up in the same clearing every day you're just gonna sit at that clearing and just start picking them off when they walk through oh, no, I, that's kind of like what it is i'm not disputing that logic which obviously it makes sense because why why spend my energy Going to you know exactly. I spend energy going to hunt for things, and actually I could get in trouble. Work smarter, or, you know, not harder. Or whatever. Exactly. So I mean, obviously it makes sense, but I'm saying like the long run, is it like gonna? Let's say we actually start, you know, taking care of our trash. What do they do then? Are they gonna revert back to their uh, their old instincts, or is that gonna die out? Or I don't know. That's what I was thinking. That's what popped in my mind the other day. I don't oh. know why it was really random. Again, that's why it's hence random topic, but that's what popped up in my head, and I was thinking about it. So. Well, here's an interesting fact. If you actually, if you're at the beach and you don't want seagulls to be stealing your food, according to the New York Times, you just stare them straight in the face. You just give them a stare down, and then they, and then they go. Huh? But it's hard to do that when there's like a billion of them like surrounding you. Just stare them like, down, Dave. Just gotta like, See, yeah, rotate and. Stare. Dave, you know, all you have to do, Dave. All you have to do is your screech. Oh. Well, Dave, Dave would get the. Dave would They're probably get arrested. Yeah, honestly. If Dave was on a crowded beach, just that... did his screech. In, in like broad daylight, there people would think there was like 
Mm. What was that movie? Pacific Rim, where like the portal yeah, opened, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, opened up on the beach, and there's a monster coming through. Because Mr. Henry, Mr. Henry freaked out because he was like, "What the hell was that?" Because I did that at Jackson's house one time as a joke, and he freaked out. He was like, he, he literally was like looking around, like, "What was that noise?" You know, I felt like I was gonna get shot if you know if I didn't like hey, actually say anything. Same. Dave, I remember the first time you did that to us. I remember the first time, Dave. Remember when you were playing football? Yeah, when yeah, Dave yeah. And Bobby shut all the lights off in the locker room and shut the door. Had to do the panther screech. People thought there was an actual panther in the freaking <laughs> locker room. Oh, Someone, I think it was like Kobe, was like jumped up on the bench and was like trying, was like swinging because thought he was yeah. gonna die. It was after like the spring game, I think. Yeah, so I don't think that'd be a good idea to do that at the beach, but. Obviously, I don't know how staring at them would work. I'll give it a shot, I guess, but I don't know. I feel like that's there's a flaw in that logic there. But, all, right, all right. Well, that's just what the New York Times wants you to do. All right, we'll give it a shot. Give it a shot. Next time we go to the beach during the summer, when this goes away, we're gonna try that out. Experiment. We'll, we'll record right. it too. We will record it. All right, social experiment. I'm yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. All right. all right. Are we ready to do things we like, things we hate to uh, wrap this one up? Yes, sir. Dave, you want to go first? Uh, no, I went first the other time. Someone else goes oh, first. Oh, okay. So, oh, it's actually, it's back to Matt now. Yeah, he, he is right. All right. Uh, things I like. We'll go... I'm, I'm going to go with things I like. I'm going with my shorter hair. I'm liking the shorter hair. Um, I let the hair go for a very long time. Very difficult morning routine. Having to get up takes me about you know, five to ten minutes to wet the hair down, comb it, put gel in. This, much easier. Went with a much shorter cut. Uh, than usual, I'm kind of reverting back to what I used to do in like my freshman sophomore year of high school, where I'm just going with like the. It wasn't really a buzz cut. Like we still want the scissors on top, but it's mm. it's certainly shorter than what I usually get. Um, a lot easier morning routine. Completely eliminates the whole hair situation because even if I comb it, it doesn't do anything. So yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of in on the shorter hair. That kind of worries me, too, because then I'm growing my hair out because you guys were like, do it. So I'm going to give it a shot. But you're saying it's going to be hard for you to maintain your hair. So imagine me with my curly hair trying to maintain that every morning because it always right now it, it takes me about like 10 because when I have to like I actually have to like blow dry my hair for it to stay up when I comb it. So it takes that takes me about, you know, five minutes to do. And then I have to obviously I don't I don't put gel or whatever in my hair. I just put what you call it. In my hair. I'm just saying it's going to be a lot lengthier process for me. To have my hair grow out, then you even if you're struggling with yours. So I don't know. I, I don't know if I should do that, guys. I really don't. I don't know. We have to uh, bail out on this. It'll be idea. worth it, Dave. It'll be worth it. I uh, will see. Um, and so I'll keep going. Things I hate. I hate these unboxings that I keep seeing on uh the internet. I saw uh El Prez was doing it the other day, um, and I found myself watching this show where it's a guy opening up his mail and then once i figured that out i was like Wait, what the hell am i watching this for and from what i heard he's get, he got 50 to 60 thousand people watching some dude open the mail so i mean obviously i understand there's not a lot on television right now but um Still. You know, unboxings kind of I mean, we could we, we could do better you know true true all right all right you all good no i'm good all Joe? right so i have Two things I like. It's both college football oh. related. So it, first one's going to be quick. I love the fact that they re-aired the uh, 06 national title game, USC-Texas, the other night. That's probably the greatest college football game ever played. Or definitely one of the greatest games ever played. Just because of like the magnitude of the game. There's a national title and all that, that stuff. Was a, that was one of the games where the hype... The, the, the quality of the, the game, game met the hype of the game. Yes, 100%. That game is one of the greatest games of all time, and it will be forever because there's no way you're going to get a lot more games that are better than that. And, it's by, and that, like, I don't know what it was about football from, like, the, you know, the that era, like the 2000 to, like, 2010. It just felt different. Like, it feels like it was like a bit, almost like a bigger deal than it is now. I don't really know how to describe it, but it just felt it was like special watching that. And like, yeah, it's probably because we grew up on it and stuff, but it's fun. Like, I got me, you know, like, so back in the football, I dusted off the old GameCube. I started playing a, a Dynasty and stuff like Football 05. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it made me dust off the GameCube and start, you know, playing the older NCAA games. 
because there's Reggie Bush, Frank Gore, and in those college games, Aaron Rodgers is sick. I think I had that game. I think I had that game too. The one with uh, Reggie great. Bush on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great. It's a great game. But and then the part two, I got to pull it back up on my phone. Uh, the stadium did a, like a poll. They pulled all FBS. It's like D1A because there's D1A and D1AA. All the D1A ADs about a expansion in the college football playoff. I did see this. Yep. And it says here that 88% want an expanded playoff. I think they should expand a playoff. 72% of them prefer an 18 playoff. 11% want 16. I think 16 teams would be awesome. But, you know, if they don't want to shorten the regular season, then you got to do eight. But And then you have 66% of them want the eight teams to be the Power Five champs. Like, you know, the Power Five conferences get the auto bid. Two at-large bids. And then the last bid goes to the best group of five teams. So instead of like this year, it was Memphis. Instead of the group of five getting an auto bid into the New Year's six, Memphis this year would have been the eight seed in the playoff, which I think would be great because then it honestly gives – that's the one thing about college basketball that college football has right now doesn't have. At the beginning of the season, no matter how slim, there is still a chance you can win the national title, even in a school like Central Connecticut because of March Madness. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. any – Problem is in college football, at the start of the season, already 85% of the country is on the outs, is not, I guess doesn't have a shot at winning the national title. Because that's just how it is. And you, know, you see that with like UConn. UConn this year, now they're an independent. If UConn went 12 and 0, they would barely be in the top 25. And that would just be because they were 12 and 0. And they wouldn't have a chance. Like UConn can't, couldn't make the playoff. But with this system, any team has a chance at the beginning of the year. If you have a good season and win your conference, you have a legitimate chance at making the playoff and then potentially going on a run and maybe winning a national championship. Yeah, you, that el- that element that you bring up, Joe, having you know, you know, college football just doesn't have an opportunity to really have a Cinderella team. Yeah, I guess there could be a team like LSU that kind of came out of nowhere, but exactly. you know, they were number one. They went undefeated and they still you know, blew out every team, but it's always good having a team that everyone kind of doubts going in and then uh, just defies all the odds, which is why, like you say, you want a 16 team. Well, I remember Mike Leach of, uh, he's now with Mississippi State, but he was with Washington State. He said he wanted a 64 team bracket, which I'm, I think that'd be awesome to do a 64 team bracket. You just we did our of, simulations. Right. So you do like, a small regular season. You get a very small sample size, but if you put 64 teams in there, you know, it would, uh, I mean, it's certainly outlandish. Like, I don't think it'll ever happen in our lifetime, a 64 team bracket for football, but I think the more teams, the better. One thing though, that you were just saying with the 64 team. I, so, you know, when I was doing, you know, for those listening, I made a 64 team bracket and I'm still a 14 Simmed it out. Bama beat Oregon in the national title game, by the way. But in the 64 team, if you think about it, round of 64, 32, Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four, National Plan, that's six games. And that's a lot of postseason games. But if you do a 10-game regular season, it's only two less games, 10-game regular season, nine conference games, you get one out of conference game. Because let's be honest here, we don't need Bama playing the Citadel every year and beating them by seven. I hate those games. They're the most pointless games. Exactly. You don't need those cupcake games. You get 10 regular season games. You get your conference title game. That's 11. Plus six is 17. In a, in a year, some of these players, you know, people say, oh, they're just kids. Well, in a year, some of them are going to be in the NFL where they play a 17-game regular season. And if you're a wild card team and go all the way and win the Super Bowl, you could potentially be playing 21 games. So it's not that crazy that people, you know, even the freshmen, People only a few years older than them are playing 17 games, maybe even more because of playoffs, every year. And if you include preseason, they're playing 25, sometimes up to near 30 games. So that's why like a 64-team playoff really isn't as crazy as it sounds if you do it right. Mm. All right. Anything you hate there, Mr. Joe? More stupid internet challenges and stuff. Yeah, Joe's been Joe, you've been against this since day one. Yeah, what's what's the latest one now? There's not really it's not that many challenges lately, but like on Snapchat I'm seeing all of the like 
Oh, the bingo. bingo. The bingo, yeah. I've seen a lot is. of the bingos oh, yeah. lately. And it's all like the dumb snap filters. Like there was one I saw today. What age will you find true love? And you got to take a picture. It's all this. And it's like, it doesn't bother me if one or two people, but when I'm seeing like 40, 50, 60 people doing it, that's all basically the same thing. Like the one I, I love the best is is the girls out there, they're doing the drinking bingos. And they're like, oh my God. And they're like circling a lot of times what one is like, oh, this is so me. No one cares. Stop. Please, for the love of God. Like I, oh. I see it, like I see it with so many people. It's like, I don't care. And most of the time I tap, I'll tap through, because I don't really look at that many stories. I'll tap through the stories, but all I see is the quick image of the bingos, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, just that's when you just speed through them. That's typically what I like to do. Number one, yeah. Dave, you should do a bingo. I don't know. You should do a bingo, Dave, tonight. <laughs> what? Stuff like that. How many raccoon bones have I left out for the raccoon tonight? How many wild wait, wait, animals wait, are in my wait, backyard? Wait, as all right, listen, listen, Joe. It's not my fault, all right? It's my parents, my, my stepdad's fault. I'm going to try to talk to him today. We're gonna fix this problem. We're gonna get this going. We're gonna eliminate the animals from coming to people's neighborhood. Because apparently it's my fault now. So we're gonna fix this problem. All right. I'm sorry, Beacon Falls. Uh, I'm sorry on my neighborhood, but I'm gonna try to, you know, fix this situation here. About um, time to step up for the community. Yeah, you know what, Jay? You're right, Joe. Yeah. These poor guys at animal control that they've been, <laughs> they've been, <laughs> been dealing with your problems for well, years. Well, no, especially at Joe's gym. Oh, like the, his, he had two skunks in this gym in like a span of like a month. So, yeah, that was annoying, yeah. But, um, all right, so things I like, well, I have two things I like, guys. Uh, you guys got to pick which, which one you want to talk about. So there's the fact I'm that I downloaded to, a couple. Yeah, I just talked about two things. Well, I mean, you guys are going to probably pick, hate one no, of let's them. Pick, let's pick Yeah, yeah, pick, pick one. All right. So we, I have, I have, I got some re- some, uh, some of my classic games that we used to play when I was younger. So I got some Sonic games. I'm, you know, I, I got on my phone recently. I've been banging them out. And then I have another thing I like is I'm watching Trailer Break Voice again. Second time. All right. So, uh, what do you not like, Dave? <laughs> I was kidding. Uh, yeah. We'll go with the. Uh, go, go with, go with, go with Sonic the Hedgehog. Go well, ahead. Yeah, because yeah, when I, I, I don't want to hear Dave talking his fake Canadian accent. What Dave. do you mean, man? Get out of here, Joe. It's pretty good. Um, but uh, no, because uh, when I when I first came here, my uh my aunt she she bought she. she Obviously, she got us a PS2, which is pretty cool. And uh, she got us a couple of games on here. And one of the first games I remember playing, really, was uh, some Sonic games. And uh, they were pretty cool. So I recently went back to my phone. I was, again, I'm bored. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait Dave. Wait, this is a quick question. Do you still have this PS2? Uh, no, I gave it to my cousin back in the... Uh, uh, I was going to say, Dave, Dave. You got to get the OG game. My cousin, uh, it's like my mom's family friend but i called them my cousins they had an arena football dude for the ps2 Bro, arena football oh it my no because i give it to my cousin really in ghana did. so i may i may buy it for him i may do that for him i'll buy it for him buy the ps2 you know, the, back dave and get arena football and bring it right. over i'll play arena football all night all right that game was that game, game was, was awesome. that game was good yeah all um, right yeah, so yeah, so basically i've just been, you know banging them out and it's just been bringing back some memories of like when i started when i first came here um, so that was fun. That's fun. Uh, things I hate. Um, I hate how when you guys are talking about sports, just like all our friend groups in general, because we're all basically jocks, and just sports in general, right? And I'm just like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, it bothers I me. I, I can't. I can't complain about it. Let's fix it. No, I, I'm. I, I don't know. It's it's really hard for me to get into like sports like that. I don't know why. I, I've tried. I've tried my hardest. I really have. I've tried to sit down, sat, you know, sit down at TV and watch sports, even baseball. But like I said, it's just, I don't know if it's because of the length of the thing or whatever, but it's just I cannot do it. Baseball's tough. Ba- regular season baseball is tough because they Especially play so when there's many 100... regular season games. Yeah, exactly. Like that's one thing. Just quick, I'll, I want to say, damn, sorry, I cut you off twice go ahead, now. Go ahead, go ahead. It's all good. With baseball, the fact that they still want to play a full 162 game season, even with all this coronavirus stuff, <laughs> is absurd. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to make no sense. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dave. You were talking. I'm sorry. I cut you off again. No, 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 no. no. That's all good. I'm just saying how it bothers me because I feel like I can't contribute much. Like, for example, you guys were talking about the football brackets and college titties and all that stuff. I couldn't do anything. I was just out there like – so it, it, it's, uh, it, it just bothered, it bothers me a lot. I don't know why. I'm going to try again. I'm, I, I really want to get into hockey, so maybe that might be my only saving grace there. But I'm going to try my hardest. Let's, 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 let's go a little slower, Dave. I know slower. you like hockey. Let's just get something that everyone kind of can talk about. Let's start with football. Football, okay. 
we'll take that first step. Maybe we get you like uh, NFL Game Pass or something like that. That way you can watch all your Seahawks games, even if it's the day after. That's fine. Um, maybe we can work into there. Then we get you a college team that you like. You know, I'm obviously a, a hardcore Oregon fan. Oh, I, I know. Think, Joe, who are you for, for I'm college? Notre Dame, and obviously Notre Dame. Yeah. At the end yeah, of the day, the flag in the background. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, all right, okay, Dave. Um, honestly, Dave, no, you know what? You honestly want you should honestly try to look up if they even have fans at games this year. Knock on wood. Now that UConn's an independent, I like. I know this sounds funny. They're playing a lot of bigger conference teams now. They're hosting a decent amount of them. Look at UConn tickets for college football. I'm not saying UConn has to be your favorite team, but I'm saying go start with that. Go to like some games at Southern with Matt, if Matt goes to any of the Southern Connecticut games. Go to more nope. Woodland games. Pay attention <laughs> a little bit to the Woodland football games. You're getting a football more than that. You were the best the commentator game. in Woodland history. No, I wasn't. I literally yes, was the were. worst. It was bad. I, I, I love, went back and listened listen. to myself, and I'm like, this is cringy. Like, the things I'm seeing around here make zero sense. Listen, when, when they go back to the archives, the guys from the – even from the season last year, do they think about – me and Chris commentating their games. Do you think about me, Zach, me and Zach Rosano, or me and Zach Drury commentating? No. They always revert back to Davis Selfie calling that game against Crosby, calling, calling edit the, the absolute package with the speed, the power, the acceleration. You go back to you call a coach Moffo a very right. intelligent man. Oh, my God. No, because no, that's that, that, what yeah, happened. Damn. I was in the moment, and whatever came to my head is what I would just spit out the mic. And that like, is what made it. That's what made it so good. No, it wasn't. I listened to what you guys do for commentary. And you guys are actually. It sounds like you guys are professionals. It sounds like you guys could go and walk onto like ESPN right now or NFL or whatever and commentate a game, and you guys would be solid. What I was saying was just gibberish and nonsense, and just me being hyped up and adrenaline. That's what it was. Adrenaline speech, not, uh, you know, not me being a. Uh, not me actually using my intelligence. I was just saying things that came in my head, basically. And there were there were times when I would commentate and Dave would end the sentence with "Yeah" or something like that. I'd be like, "Wow, Dave, what did yeah. you what did you see on that play? Oh yeah, and, uh, God, why? Well, because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. That's, that's what I'm saying. I don't know the sports thing. That's why. Because if if I knew what I was doing, I would be like, oh, some sports words here and there sprinkled in between. But no, I didn't know what I was doing, so it was just like, okay. Right, Dave, we're gonna try. We're gonna try. We're gonna try our best this year to get you uh, into sports please, games, please, please, get please. you into the lore of the whole thing, and I don't know. Maybe by the end of the, maybe by the end of, I don't know. Maybe maybe the fall time we can have like a we can have like a podcast strictly talking about the college football championship or the Super Bowl or something like that. Oh boy, please! I, I really want to get to that level. Me too. Me too. It's, it's tough to force something like that, but David, in all honesty, you know what really helps you like fall? Because that's the thing. You've got to like fall in love with sports, kind of. Like, you can't just be like, oh, I'm watching this just yeah, because, exactly. you know, I want to watch it. Dave, the one thing you should try, like, try to go to more local sporting events. Like, even like for colleges, like, try to go maybe one night, you know, you're home, get mad if I'm home, try to go to a UConn basketball game. They're going back to the Big East. Go to even local schools like Quinnipiac, Sacred Heart, Yale, Central. Like you go to like the smaller D. I'm saying D1 because it just you know that's yeah. what's going to expose you to like the better talent stuff. You go to those first. Remember, Dave, we go to used to go to Yale, Harvard. Obviously mm-hmm. now you know oh, we can't because we're still at school when they play. Yeah. But like you remember when we went to that Yale game, how awesome it was. The stadium was almost filled. Yale yeah. Bowl, it's like fifty-five thousand people there. It's stuff like that that makes you like enjoy the game, like. Try to go get tickets, you know, I'm the same way. I'm saying this, like, out loud because, like, you know, if I try to get tickets to go see Jets game next year or over the summer if they start letting fans back into games, maybe we go up to Fenway, go see a Red Sox game, go to City Field, go to – Yankee Stadium's really expensive. I don't like the Yankees. But Fen- Fenway, I went up to Fenway. It's a beautiful park. I went with Joe Shea last year. It's stuff like that. You just got to try to go to a live sporting event, and okay. that's where you're really going to fall in love with sports. All right. I'll give I'll give that a shot for sure. You guys just gotta just kind of reel me in every time I feel every time I'm going out. Just kind of reel me back in, and if, I feel like eventually it's gonna become uh it's gonna become part of me because I I I, I don't I can't follow things like that. Like if, if someone doesn't reel me back in, I just will just go off and do my own thing. So just just keep that up, and hopefully I could I could I could um, participate in the sports stock and not feel like a coin. So okay. 
Well, boys, we've almost hit an hour, believe it or not. It goes by ridiculously fast every time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just feel like we're getting longer and longer so as our chemistry continues to build. So uh, thank you, everyone, for the support. Um, hopefully more to come down the line. There's plenty of time. And, um, you know, everyone just stay safe out there. Stay healthy. Um, hopefully, like we mentioned earlier, not too much longer of this whole quarantine thing so we can go out and start enjoying um, summer, the summer of 2020. So thanks yeah. again for all the support. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, stay tuned for more uh, for more guests coming up soon. Right. Yes. In the future. Yep. Bye.